So let's uh, let's finish up our immunology kind of section on organ rejection. Oops. Organ rejection. Okay, so what is organ rejection? So let's just say I just transplanted a kidney. Uh, there are three main types of rejection. And then there's also a disease uh, that we're going to talk about at the end. So there's going to be hyperacute rejection. There's going to be acute rejection. There's going to be chronic rejection. So any one of these three can occur. So if I just received a kidney from somebody, um, I could have hyperacute, acute, or chronic kidney rejection. Also, there's a thing called graft versus host disease, and we'll cover the very basics. Uh, my goal is to cover the very basics of these. Uh, no, I'm not here to tell you every little detail about these uh, these rejections. However, I am here to tell you kind of the basics, the higher yield buzzwords that you should know. So let's begin with that first one, hyperacute. Acute. Hyperacute. So let's let's talk what hyperacute rejection is. So here we go, we have a donor. Here's a little kidney. And we're gonna put that kidney in the recipient. Now, okay, so you have a donor kidney, it gets replaced and inserted into the recipient. What can happen? Well, the recipient is going to have antibodies. They're going to have antibodies in their bloodstream. So there's going to be a whole host of different antibodies to bacteria, to some foreign antigens. The body will have produced antibodies all during its life, and those antibodies will be circulating around in the bloodstream. So if any of these preformed antibodies cross-react, so let's say we have an antibody against strep pneumo. Let's say that antibody is made by the body, by this recipient, in, in regards to strep pneumo. So every time a strep pneumo bug comes along, these antibodies will attack it. Well, let's say there's cross-reactivity. If, if some of the antigens that are present on this donor kidney kind of look like strep pneumo antigen. They're not strep pneumo antigen, but they kind of look like it. These antibodies can actually attack the organ. So they're preformed. The key, key thing is preformed antibodies attack the uh, donor organ. And when they attack the donor organ, uh, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have destruction of the vasculature. These antibodies will attack the antigen present on here and uh, destroy the vasculature and the endothelial layer. Um, when you have antibodies attacking that endothelial layer of the blood vessel, um, you'll get necrosis, you'll get fibrosis, you'll get a whole bunch of ischemia. So what's gonna happen is antibodies, so what's, let's, let's back up. We're gonna connect the blood supply. None of this happens until the blood supply is connected. So we're going to connect the arteries, we're going to connect the renal veins, everything's in place. And a hyperacute reaction, surgeons uh, used to have to look, before we kind of started figuring out typing and, uh, and matching the donor to the recipient, surgeons used to put in a kidney and stand there. And what they would do is they would stand there for, you know, five, ten minutes. Well, why would they just stand there? They would hook up the renal vasculature, they'd hook up the artery, they'd hook up the vein, and they would stand there. They're looking for a hyperacute reaction. So a hyperacute reaction happens within minutes. Well, this is because they're waiting to see, those surgeons are waiting to see if preformed antibodies will be attacking. And if they do, you would see that kidney start to turn cyanotic. Uh, the antibodies would be attacking the endothelium of that new organ. Uh, they would accumulate in the blood vessel. That accumulation would cause like a necrosis, an ischemic attack of the kidney. So it would turn colors. It would not like it. So the surgeons would immediately remove it and close up the patient and try again later. So that's that's going to be a hyperacute reaction. It's very it's it's a form of type two hypersensitivity.
sensitivity, scribble, scribble. So it's type two hypersensitivity. Well, if you remember, I've already made a video on the hypersensitivity reactions. Type one was going to be mast cell in the IgE, so you're talking allergic hypersensitivity. Type two was gonna be the antibody mediated, meaning antibodies are gonna attack. There's no immune complex that's gonna be forming and depositing. No, it's the antibodies that'll be attacking. So it'll be a type two hypersensitivity. Let's, uh, let's now go on to acute rejection. So acute rejection. Uh, this instead, remember the last one, the hyperacute was within minutes. Now we're talking, you know, weeks to months later. So we're talking uh, a little bit down the road. It's still acute. I mean, a week to months rejection is still pretty fast, if you ask me. And the mechanism is thought to be humoral. So kind of like above, where you have antibodies that'll be forming. They're not preformed antibodies, but maybe maybe the host is going to make some antibodies against this new organ. Uh, it's too early to tell. Or it'll be um, acute cell mediated. If it's cell mediated, it means that we're not going to use antibodies. We're going to use cells instead. So what cells are we going to use? We're going to use our cytotoxic T lymphocytes. We're going to use our natural killer cells, which are part of the innate. This is part of the adaptive immune system. And then also we've got macrophages. Again, part of the innate immune system. All of these are going to be involved in the killing of, of that organ. And what's going to happen is uh, it's kind of the same thing. These cells will determine that the, that the organ antigen is not good, is not self-antigen, and it will attack it. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually treat this. The hyperacute reactions, the rejections, we're not really able to do much uh, simply because the antibody is already circulating in the bloodstream. However, for the acute reactions, since if we're dealing with a cell-mediated acute reaction type of rejection, we can try high-dose steroids. So high-dose corticosteroids, or we could do immunosuppressants. Immunosuppressants, okay. So we've got high-dose steroids or immunosuppressants. Um, so acute, there is still a chance for that organ. The last type of rejection we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna talk about is gonna happen, you know, months to years down the road. So while hyperacute was minutes, acute was weeks to months, now we're talking months to years. So we're talking way later down in the process. So what is gonna happen is again, it's thought to be either antibody or you know cell mediated, just like we talked about. Um, and what you're gonna see is you're gonna see like a fibrotic tissue, you're gonna see fibrosis. And what fibrosis is, you're gonna see scar tissue, you're gonna see fibrotic tissues, you're gonna see collagen in the vessels. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna have an endothelium here. So here's your blood vessel. Your endothelial layer is the inside layer. And in that endothelial layer, you may have fibrosis and that fibrosis can accumulate in the endothelium and eventually you'll have an occlusion and that can cause uh, necrosis again, ischemia necrosis, and you'll eventually lose that organ. So that is, that's kind of what's going on, is if you have damage, if you have cell mediated or antibodies, you're gonna have destruction of that endothelium, that's gonna cause localized inflammation, it's gonna cause more, more damage than good, and eventually that damage is gonna scar over, you're gonna get scarring, you're gonna get buildup. So that's, that's why, and there is no treatment, no treatment. So there's no treatment for chronic. For acute, there was stuff you could try. I mean, you could try immunosuppressants, steroids, um, for chronic, really, there is no option besides get a new organ. So what we've talked about are three diseases where the host or the recipient, so recipient, will get a new organ, gets new organ, and the host's immune system attacks 
organ. So they attack the organ tissue. So those are the three types that we just talked about. Now there's going to be one type where the organ attacks the host. So this one, we've, I've already alluded to it, is back here where we talked about graft versus host disease. So I'll actually explain what that means now. So we've got graft versus host disease. Well, what is graft versus host disease? Typically, you'll see it in bone marrow or the blood system, uh, but it really can happen with any organ. That's because organs will have, uh, they'll have T cells. So any tissue within the body will have T cells. And those T cells can proliferate. So they'll, they'll proliferate. And when they're done proliferating, if they cross react, it is, it's where the organ will attack the host or the recipient's body. So what's going to happen is T cells, once they've proliferated, they're going to take a look at the human system. They'll say, hey, that doesn't look normal. Hey, that doesn't look normal. None of this looks normal. I'm going to attack it all. It's because that organ got transplanted from one person's body to another. And that new person's body where the organ landed uh, looks foreign. It looks like they're on a desert island. It's like if a human was transplanted from Earth to Mars. It would look foreign. It would look like a different environment. And we'll say, that doesn't look normal. I'm going to attack it. So all the, all the T cells that we brought over from the, uh, from the graft, from the organ that we just transplanted, whether it be bone marrow or theoretically any organ or any tissue, those T cells will attack the host. Okay, so that's the very basics about graft first host disease. And then also we have the three different uh, organ rejection reactions. Just covered the very, the very basics, kind of the tip of the iceberg about all of these. If you have any questions, make sure you ask. Uh, otherwise, I always enjoy hearing comments. Uh, please like if you enjoyed or learned anything in this video and subscribe for more. Thanks a lot.